Hey everyone, we're going to take some old technology, French cleats, and combine it with some new technology to make it even better. Let's begin. Our new friend Bob Butterworth just recently sent us one of his new 3D printed locking mechanisms. But wait, don't click off. Just because you don't have a 3D printer doesn't mean you can't have one of these. He specifically said you can make one of these out of wood, and I'm going to show you how in just a little bit. But let's first go over all the benefits of this and show you exactly how it's going to help you in your shop. Now maybe you're thinking, why do I need locking mechanism on my French cleats? Let me give you a couple examples. Let's say you have a small holder and you have a tool on it. For example, this hand plane here. Sometimes when I go to lift this off, especially if it's in a hurry, the whole holder comes off with it as well. Thus hitting the floor, possibly hitting your foot or hitting something else you're working on. Another example is say you have kids or just people visiting. Sometimes they might bump into your tools, thus knocking one of your holders off, and now you have to go and buy an expensive tool. Well, the simple easy fix is grabbing one of these little locks and applying it to the back of your holder, thus securing it in place and you don't have to worry anymore about those potentially falling off. Now I've cleared off a little space in my cleat wall here to show you exactly how to install these. Now I do want to mention that these come in two different styles and that's so that you could possibly have one on each side. But in most cases I believe that one of these should be good enough. Now to install the locker we want to put the holder up on your French cleat. We want to then take your locker and you want to position it so that it will be bumping the bottom of your cleat here and stick it right behind the holder. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can have it where the bottom is flush and the tab sticks out so it's real easy to grab, or you can push it so that it is just about invisible right behind the holder, but you can still access it relatively easily. Now once you have it in position, you should take a sharp pencil and make a little mark down here so you know exactly where the bottom of your lock should be. Now I've moved the holder over to my workbench because we're now going to extend that line across the back of our holder and to do that we need a straight edge. For example, this is just a combination square and once you get it lined up then take a pencil and just make your mark. Now I've decided to make my version almost invisible so I'm lining up the edge of the handle here with the edge of the tool holder and then of course that line we just drew we want to align the bottom of the locking system with it. Now to hold this little locking system in place all I need is a little half inch screw and I want to pre-drill it so I don't crack my holder and so I'm just going to make a little mark with a pencil then lift this off and I can pre-drill that hole. And just in case you're wondering when the screw is in place it only goes about halfway through this half inch plywood. Now I've made this one pretty snug because I just like it that way but you can tighten this whatever way you like as long as it doesn't move freely. That's it, it's really that easy. Now let's install this on our wall and see how it works. Oh yeah, that's nice and tight. Let me show you up close. Alright, sliding it on, push the lock in place, it's nice and secure. Take it off, let's move the lock, and there you go. I love this setup because now I can take my hand plane, I can take it in and out as many times as I want and I don't have to worry about the holder hitting the floor. Now I'm about to make a wooden version of this just for you, but first I want to say that for those of you who do have a 3D printer, Bob is giving away the plans for your printer for free, so I'll make sure I'll put a link to his video in the description, so make sure you check it out. Now to make a wooden version of this, I need some dimensions, so let's measure this. Now the height of this is about two and a quarter, the width is about an inch, then the thickness, it's about a half inch, and the hole from the bottom, about a quarter inch. Now to make this setup, I'm going to be using a scrap piece of half inch plywood. You don't have to have plywood, it's what I had on hand though. Now I'm going to be making this handle a little bit differently. So I'm actually going to rip down just a one inch section. Then we're going to cut the height down to two and a quarter. Now to get the round over edge, I'm using a large washer. This is about an inch in diameter and it seems to work well with the curvature. So we're going to line that up right on the edge there and then trace that out with a pencil and then cut it out. Now we're going to use a sanding wheel to smooth out this rough edge. I then drilled a small hole halfway across the board and a quarter inch up so it's in the same spot. Now this is the point you need to determine which side you want the locking mechanism to be on. If you want the left or the right, this will determine which side of course the handle will be on and the countersink. So make sure you think that one through. Now the 3D printed version has a really deep hole for the countersink and the wooden one isn't going to be as deep. So instead of a half inch screw, we're probably going to need a three quarter inch screw. Now to make the handle, you could do a bunch of configurations, even taking a craft stick and gluing it to it. But I'm going to keep it really simple. We're just going to take another screw and come in from the side and that way it's a nice little grip we can push it in and out. And since the side of plywood is not very strong, make sure you pre-drill that hole. And there's our wooden version. Let's test it out.
With the ability to 3D print this or make this on your own out of wood, there's no excuse for you not to have one of these. This is a great addition to any French cleat setup. Thank you, Bob, so much for sending me some of these to play with. If you would like to see Bob's video on how he made these, I'll put a link to that in the description. Make sure you check that out and let him know exactly your thoughts on this. Now, if you're interested in French cleats, I have a playlist right over here with literally hundreds of ideas that you need to check out.